What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out is WWE PG era dead? Now, I've been looking forward to checking this particular video out by WrestleMania. A lot of people have been discussing that, especially with this past Monday Night Raw. It didn't give that PG vibe, and lately, Raw and just what they've been doing for the build to WrestleMania for some of these segments haven't been uh i guess you could say it didn't have that pg feel especially with the rock coming back everything that he's damn near done is giving that more adult vibe and just the edginess to the product them actually using blood with the whole cody Rhodes and the rock uh beat down and apparently y'all were saying he actually did blade himself legitimately like it was, it's refreshing to see the segment with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins, the edginess there. I'm loving it. And since they are going to um, Monday Night Raw is going to be on Netflix uh, next year, there's a good chance they probably will let them go a little bit more on the edgier side and, and you know, with the promos and, and what we see in the ring because it's going to be on streaming platforms. You know, I don't think they're going to go full maybe TV 14 like some people think because obviously they still have investors and, you know, they want to be able to sell products to kids and stuff like that. But I think it's going to be more on the edgier side and I'm looking forward to it. So we're going to see what uh, WrestleMania has to say here. Is the PG era dead? How do y'all feel about it? Let's get right into this one. Should be a good one. The March 25th episode of Raw was considered by many to be one of the greatest episodes of WWE's flagship show. Factuals. The show had grit, it had intensity, and it managed to bring a feeling back to fans that hasn't been present since the Attitude Era. The show featured names such as Cody Rhodes, The Rock, and CM Punk delivering TV-14 style curse words, and whilst most of these were censored, it highlighted that the WWE talent, particularly those at the very top, are pushing the boundaries of what is permitted. The Good. angle that got everyone talking took place at the end of the show, and it saw the final boss, The Rock, deliver such a brutal beatdown on Cody Rhodes that Rhodes was busted wide open. It's Great. been a long time since a blade job of this magnitude had been seen on WWE television. Fantastic. It's not just weekly TV that is leading to questions being asked around the PG status, as even on live events, Rhea Ripley is exposing her butt cheeks <laughs> and delivering stink faces. Whilst WWE live events are more relaxed, WWE and Ripley have embraced these raunchy antics and made numerous social media <laughs> posts regarding the acting question. Thanks to instances such as Ripley exposing her cheeks as well as wrestlers using explicit curse words. It's just a wild sentence that I know some of y'all love to hear. Rhea exposing the cheeks. That's that's great. Fans are collectively asking, is the WWE PG era dead? A WWE transitioned to a PG product in the summer of 2008, and there were numerous reasons for this, ranging uh -huh. from political reasons to WWE believing that a PG product would make the product more attractive to investors and sponsors. And that's what it all came down to. For those who don't know, that's the real reason why they did that. It's about money. They wanted to get as much money as possible. More investors will buy into a more family friendly oriented product because now they can sell more to those families. That's just what it was back in the day in the attitude era. It wasn't about that. It was TV 14 because you're trying to sell to the young men uh, that are watching the show, the demographic that they were trying to hit. Now, or at least at that time, it was more or less you're trying to sell to families now because those are the ones spending more money because wrestling wasn't as popular as it was in the 90s and times had changed. A lot of fans switched off the WWE product when this switch ensued as some fans enjoyed the edgier presentation that a TV 14 product would allow. For the fans that remained, they mostly stuck by WWE due to their interest in their favorite stars such as John Cena, Randy Orton, and CM Punk. And whilst the product would embrace PG elements at times, for the most part, the in-ring product was good. So Raw, SmackDown, and pay-per-view events traditionally made for easy viewing. A lot of the criticism directed towards the PG era stems from the belief that WWE can't produce compelling content with a rating. 
Whilst this argument does have some Smack degree of weight, food. it's worth noting that numerous storylines that have been widely celebrated over the past 15 years or so have been presented under PG guidelines. Yeah. Storylines such as Randy Orton vs. the McMahon family, Kofi Mania, and who can forget the ongoing Bloodline saga have all been PG. Mm -hmm. Additionally, SmackDown, WWE's secondary show, which debuted in 1999, has always been a PG presentation. Yeah. The SmackDown during the Attitude Era and Ruthless Aggression Era always had the ability to push the boundaries or what a PG wrestling show would allow. Mm -hmm. But WWE is in a prosperous place as things stand. Attendance is so high that WWE are modifying sets for Raw to accommodate more and more fans. And That's crazy. And I, I like what they did there. You know, or well, let me make myself smaller. You can see it, 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 def, it was sold out. It was sold out. And you know, Brooklyn, the last Monday Night Raw before Mania. Oh my God. This is why I'm excited. Because I have a really great feeling that that Raw is going to be great. I can't wait to see it. And then I have an even greater feeling that the Monday Night Raw at the Mania is going to be so good. Last year's was fucking abysmal. This year's, I think it's going to be fantastic. And I do think we're going to get something great at this year's WrestleMania. Ratings remain consistently great, despite the viewing habits of consumers drastically changing. The product is also acclaimed by many as most shows receive rave reviews and WWE premium live events have become must-see viewing. Yeah. WWE also has so many names that are insanely over with the audience and these are names that WWE could easily book to win the world title. Names such as Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso, LA Knight, mm -hmm. Sami Zayn yep. and Drew McIntyre have yep. connected with the fans and this is down to a strong booking that puts an emphasis on grounded storytelling. Due to the WWE being a PG product and the company doing as well as it is, is there any need to change direction? If WWE allowing curse words and blood in a PG environment, what is there to change? According to Dave Meltzer in a recent edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, WWE is still a PG product and a memo was sent out reaffirming this to talent. There was a memo sent just a few weeks ago to all talent from Nick Khan, Paul Levesque and Dan Ventrell, Executive Vice President of Talent, which states that this is a PG company, no swearing and said that includes everything on social media. And then Johnson swears all over his promos on social media each week and even curses during his television promos on Fox, which has him bleeped out or just gone dark. Meltzer drew specific attention to The Rock, who stated that talent believed that The Rock should be the one setting the example. Even though Meltzer is adamant that this report is accurate, The Rock himself took to Twitter mm -hmm. to question its validity. WWE have yep. an upcoming move to Netflix, and this has led to speculation that this is finally when WWE will abandon the PG rating, mainly due to Netflix not being a traditional station such as USA or Fox. Whilst nothing is confirmed, CM Punk did throw a passing comment on Raw mm -hmm. on March 25th that cursing will be allowed on Netflix. This may have been a throwaway line from Punk, yet it's worth dissecting. Netflix is going to give WWE a ton of freedom to do whatever they like. And even though Netflix do use a rating system, it's unknown what they plan to rate WWE programming. We will likely know more information surrounding the nature of the Netflix deal as we approach 2025 and WWE begins to heavily market the switch over to fans. I, I do think it's going to be a combination. I don't think they're going full TV 14, especially for Monday Night Raw, because once again, uh fox is going to usa and i think they'll you know it's gonna still be pg um but once again you don't have to and that's the thing that's that's the thing you don't have to go full tv 14 it just depends on the storylines if the storyline involves a little bit more mature themes that's when it needs to be you know put out there that this particular storyline needs the tv 14 rating so it may be a combination of pg on one segment and then on the next segment it may bump up to tv 14 or they have a range of pg to tv 14 they can do something like that because i i think honestly this bloodline storyline especially with what's been going on with cody and the rock it deserves a pg 14 because of how they've built it up and how personal it's gotten you know, the CM Punk stuff, CM Punk, Drew, Seth stuff. It deserves that because of how personal it's gotten. Not everything does, but some of it does. You know, not everything needs that rating, but some of the stuff that you have on the show needs it. So it needs to be a balance. You know, I don't think they need to go for PG-14, I mean TV-14, because it's not necessary. Not every story needs to revolve around cursing and blood, because then you lose 
the effectiveness. And that's what I, I you know, I, I've seen some people talking about, oh, y'all talking, y'all getting hyped for Cody bleeding, but you, 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 you uh, have a different opinion when you see it on AEW. And the difference between that is AEW is TV 14 and they bleed all the time. It's almost a weekly thing. So it's not the same. It doesn't resonate the same as a, a product that usually they rarely do it. So when you do see it, nine times out of ten, it's all it's a legit uh someone's getting busted open legitimately, and they usually have to stop the damn match. But this was a segment that they allowed that in. They rarely do that, and it adds to the overall effect of the story. That's the difference. AEW has been TV 14 since the inception. And a lot of people like that because they get to see more of the stuff that they miss from WWE. But when you see it all the time, it loses its effect. So just putting that out there. And WWE is making record profits virtually every quarter. And it seems like the Netflix deal was signed based on the current positioning of the product. This likely means that WWE and Netflix have agreed to present a similar product on their platform. Yet, as was previously alluded to, Netflix's rules aren't as strict. So WWE would have the freedom to push the boundaries of what is allowed. Uh -huh. Outside of Netflix, WWE have endless high dollar deals that link to a younger demographic. The PG rating was instrumental in attaining WWE a lucrative deal yep. with Mattel, and WWE and Mattel's working relationship may drastically alter if the makers of the Barbie dolls find out that WWE features curse words and bloodshed. These are key points that WWE will need to think about before they make any bold decisions. What many fans often forgot is that several years ago, it was widely reported by top sources within the wrestling industry that WWE was going to switch back to a TV-14 presentation. This change was only going to affect Raw, yet just a few hours after this initial report circulated, it was reported that WWE had scrapped the plans. Mm -hmm. It was never made clear why they quickly decided against the plans, yet there's always been speculation that a major sponsor or partner may have taken issue with the WWE's sudden attitude change. The Rock has been pushing the boundaries of a PG era since he returned to WWE at the start of 2024, and this has been nothing new for the Great One. Yeah. As even during his 2011-2013 return, he was given more leeway in terms of promo uh -huh. material compared to the rest of the roster. Now with The Rock on the board of directors, he is very much a corporate man, while still being a talent on TV. The Rock is never going to risk getting WWE in hot water, so it's likely that 90% of the things he says are either approved or nobody within WWE has taken exception to. Some fans on social media are rejecting the claims of this new era being a new attitude era, and some are labeling it as a renaissance era. This product is red hot, and as mm -hmm. The Rock has stated, pro wrestling is finally cool again. This isn't just down to WWE pushing the boundaries by allowing their wrestlers to curse and bleed. It's thanks to Triple H's masterful booking, who's put pure care and attention into booking characters like they matter. Triple H put a lot of focus on storytelling and compelling rich storytelling in that. Storylines such as The Bloodline and Cody Rhodes' quest to finish the story have been pure cinema, and these have helped WWE get to the advantageous position they are in right now. Nice. But they may want to be careful of fans promoting the fact that the Attitude Era is back. While Sierra was one of, if not the most successful and acclaimed errors in WWE's history, a ton of their storylines, particularly WWE's presentation of women, is now insanely outdated. Yeah. Drawing attention to elements of this nature wouldn't do WWE any favors. On the flip side, casual fans who stopped watching the WWE product years ago, realizing that WWE is now cool again and the product isn't as cartoonish and kid-friendly as it once was, could be the next step in WWE reaching the heights of yesteryear. Right now, it seems as if the PG era isn't dead just quite yet, but WWE are pushing the PG guidelines, and if sponsors and relevant networks don't kick up a fuss, then it's likely that these edgier, more controversial elements of their presentation are here to stay, especially as WWE enter a new era on Netflix in 2025. Mm -hmm. Even if they did commit to changing the rating to a TV-14 classification, not too much would change. Sure, yeah. TV-14 gives WWE more creative freedom in some areas, yet they still have to answer to sponsors, partners, and networks, and it may be WWE's best interest to stay where they are and ride this incredible hype train for as long as humanly possible. What would you guys think? Yeah. Let us know in the comments. I, I don't think it's going to be a very big change because, once again, they may, you know, change it for Netflix reasons, you know, just to have it out on the screen to let people know what they're watching, what it may be rated. Um, but outside of that, it's... They're good. Just, like I said... Certain storylines deserve more adult themes. Keep doing that. That's it.
That's all they have to do, and then you're good. You're you're squared away. You don't have to go too crazy with it. People are going to want to check out these more adult themes in these certain storylines. That's it. So hopefully we can see Cody Rose go out there and get a little bit violent, get a little bit grimy. That's what that's what fans want to see. We've been seeing it in certain situations with certain storylines. We want to see that. If I have an issue with you and you've made it personal on live television, it should be some aggression. It should be some cursing. It you That's realistic human emotions. And that's what people connect with. It don't have to be cursing all the time. It don't have to be bleeding all the time. It depends on the situation and the story you're trying to tell. You feel me? So, hey, I'm I'm all for it. I don't I don't think the PG era is dead per se, but I do feel like it's they're kind of they're floating. They're 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 allowing certain storylines to get more adult themes, PG, you know, TV 14, and then they allow other storylines to be relatively PG because you know it doesn't require the extra blood or the extra cursing and stuff like that. So comment down below, let me know. Do you guys feel like the PG era is dead or do you feel like it's more or less, it's still there, but they, you know, they kind of combined a little bit more of the TV 14 with the PG era and how you liking what you're seeing on WWE television as of right now or as of lately? Have you been liking the direction they've been taking some of these storylines and allowing some of these wrestlers and individuals to have a little bit more freedom in what they say and do on television let me know how you feel about the overall product in general but i appreciate all love support road to 150k and i'm still gonna be the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see you on the next one peace